Welcome to today's webinar on private lending made easy. My name is Lisa Rodriguez. I'm the Director of Retail and National Accounts here at Newview. And um, let's take care of some housekeeping here. Uh, first, we want to confess that we are not lawyers or CPAs or attorneys. We are a non-fiduciary. Um, basically, all of our webinars are for educational purposes only. And we do encourage at times when things get a little gray or people are, uh, our clients are being creative, that you do consult with attorneys, accountants, and financial advisors before entering into any type of investment. Um, I also want to pause here and just say happy Earth Day to everybody. Please take a look at our Instagram for pictures of what we're doing here at Newview, and um, we're having a, a good day. So. What is Newview and where do we fit in? Uh, we are a custodian. We're similar to a bank in that we hold your funds until you tell us where you want to direct them. So that is what we do. We want to make the process as simple as possible. We want to be available to you. Uh, we are considered an essential business. So we are here, we are staffed, and we are working um, to make sure that we are available for you, our clients and potential clients. And then we also want to be responsive and we want to be uh, accountable with what your your responsibilities that you're giving us and we want to earn a relationship with you so thank you so much again for being on the call today and today we have a guest speaker alan cowgill and he's going to talk again about private money made easy and i asked alan yesterday how long he's uh, what his experience level was and he said he's been doing this for a couple of decades so we're gonna try to condense a couple of decades into 30 minutes here, and uh, we appreciate your time. And without further ado, here is Alan Tavio. Well, hi, everybody. I'm tickled that we're on this today, and I'm going to give you a lot of, of information. Um, the uh, One of the things I want to tell you about, too, is I love answering folks' questions so they got this. And um, what uh, uh, what I'd like to have you do is send your questions in, and then I'll uh, answer them at the uh, at the en end of the uh, at the end of the talk. Okay, so a little bit about what I'm going to cover today. My agenda. I'm going to start out with uh, my background a little bit, and that'll be very short. Uh, and then I get into a private lender training for you folks out there that have money to loan, um, IRA money. Uh, I'll cover uh, some uh, high points for you. And then I'll move into the uh, real estate training for the folks that are listening that are real estate investors out there. Uh, when I got started, uh, I uh, was working in corporate America, got a quarter century in corporate America, and uh, I got into real estate uh, to change my life. Now, I, first year I bought two properties in five and 18. Since that point in time, I've done hundreds of real estate deals and many of the deals I do without monthly payments. And I'm gonna talk to you about that today. When I started out, I started going out to banks and the banks were friendly to real estate investors, but one day the regulators took a look at their books and said, you can't do those type of loans anymore to the bank. And that shut my funding off within 24 hours. And so I went over and I got a line of credit and I found out quickly that when you max that out, you shut your own business down. I worked with hard money lenders and they're great, um, but they're also uh, somewhat costly and then creative real estate financing out there. Um, the problem I was having there was because I was going to banks and had lines of credit is uh, they had control of um, my funding. And I realized that with private money lenders, uh, my, uh, I could uh, do it a lot easier and a lot better and a lot faster. And it made a huge uh, difference in my business. Um, my first lender was my mother. That's my mom. Um, I came up through my real estate education and I heard these words, hard money lenders and private lenders. And they're distinctly different. The hard money lenders set the rules and then the private lenders, uh, the real estate investor basically um, comes up with the rules. And so I went back to mom and I said, look, you're getting this poultry low rate of return on a bank CD. I'll pay you three, four, five times what you're getting on a bank CD. I'll uh, give you a mortgage, a promissory note, hazard insurance, a lender title insurance. And mom jumped for joy and she became my first private lender. And then what happened was uh, the company I was with, uh, they had uh, layoffs and they offered this huge company package, biggest one they'd ever offered, and I took it. I wanted to be a full-time real estate investor. I'd been honing my skills behind the scenes, and I stepped out as a uh, full-time real estate investor. And the only problem of it is uh, my timing. There was a downturn in the rental market. I had to evict some folks, and I ran into a negative $10,000 a month cash flow problem, and banks wouldn't loan me money. 
So I was shut down again. So what happened was um, I realized that the answer to my situation was to embrace this private lender concept. And I already had two, mom and then a, another fellow uh, that had loaned me some money. But I realized that I needed to bring money into my life quickly so I could fund my real estate deals and dig out of this $10,000 negative cash flow problem. And so what I did was I, uh, I held a luncheon. I had 18 potential private lenders showing up and uh, told them about my real estate business and uh, asked them if they wanted to loan money. And then the next month I did it again and 12 folks showed up. And a couple months later, I added it up and I had a million dollars to go buy property and it changed my life. And that's how I got into working with private money lenders. Now, people that are listening right now, if you are a lender or a potential lender, if you've got money in New View and you wanna loan it out, there's some documents that I wanna to talk to you about and how to handle the money to keep you safe. Number one is you should get a disclosure statement from the real estate investor. So they should, mine's nine pages long. Um, and what it does is it, it tells you the risk and the benefits of, uh, of loaning money. So it, it tells you about the lender, what type of deals, that, or about the real estate investor, what type of deals they're doing. And it gives you a, a good feeling, I would think, of uh, loaning them money. So you wanna read it. Um, do not give the real estate investor money directly. You're gonna, you are their bank and a bank doesn't, if you're gonna buy your personal property, they don't give you the money directly, you go through a closing. And you wanna do the same thing with your money here. So have the real estate investor send the money in to a title company, into a closing, and then, uh, and then you get the money once you close and you'll get documents coming out of that. And I'll show you those in, a minute, in, a, in just a minute, okay? You, because you want the loan secured, and that's very important. Number three, when they sell the property, the real estate investor sells the property, the money comes back to you at closing. Don't leave it with the real estate investor because then the money is unsecured. And I had uh, experienced over the years, many uh, private lenders prefer to do that. And, and I, I think you need to have the money secured. Now here are the five documents that you wanna get. You wanna take a screenshot of this real quick, but you're gonna get the video of this uh, when it's over anyhow. You, you wanna have a disclosure statement like I talked about, and then you're gonna get a mortgage, a promissory note, hazard insurance, and lender title insurance. Uh, so those are the five documents that uh, I always give my lenders, and those are the ones that you're gonna wanna get, okay? Um, the other thing I wanna talk to you about is how the real estate investor came to you to offer you money. Uh, F, F, and A stands for family, friends, and associates. If you know people out there that, uh, and have you known them for uh, a while, then you can borrow money, then you can borrow money from them. Okay. Um, the thing I want to uh, let you know that if, if you're, if a stranger shows up or if you've seen an ad in the paper that somebody wants to loan money um, and they're coming to you through advertising, you just need to know that the real estate investor has followed the SEC rules on advertising. There's six different programs that I teach my students on advertising and that they need to file with some paperwork, send in some paperwork, sometimes pay a small fee fee and then they are allowed to, to advertise. Uh, the other thing on the uh, family, friends and associates versus a stranger, how do you tell the difference? Well, there's a, a rule out there by the SEC that if you know somebody 30 days and you've had three contacts with them, then on the 31st day and the uh, fourth contact, you can borrow money. And that's if they're a stranger, you don't know them. Uh, so uh, that's, that's the rules. Now the Wall Street Journal come out on IRAs, and they said through a little known tool known as a self-directed individual retirement account, individuals can pursue a wide range of investments from real estate to businesses. Now at least several thousand people are trying to goose their savings by using self-directed IRAs to invest in mortgages. And this goes on. It says typically IRA investors aren't looking to back 30 year conventional mortgages. More often they're looking to make loans uh, with terms lasting from three months to a few years for fixer uppers, small scale developers, or families who are relocating and need a bridge loan between home sales. They normally find borrowers through an informal network of real estate agents, mortgage brokers, and other investors. So that's exactly what I'm teaching today. And here it is in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, this is one of my students, I wanted to share this with you. This is uh, Henry Grant. Um, I, uh, I spoke at a, uh, a real estate event up in Minnesota. That's his family. 
And he came up and he was so happy to see me because he's got $7 million of private money that he can use. And it just changed his life. So that's the kind of impact that uh, you could make out there. And let's take a, a fictitious person here, Aunt Mary. Let's say she saved all of her life and she's got a half a million in her IRA for retirement and the current CD rate is 1%. It's actually lower than that. Um, and so that's an annual income of $5,000. So she'd get that in Social Security and that's a struggle for Aunt Mary. And then the real estate investor comes along, offers uh, uh, to help her out by putting money uh, borrowing money from her and putting it on real estate. And let's say that the real estate investor is willing to pay 6%. That means rather than $5,000, Aunt Mary gets $30,000 and it changed her, her life. That's the impact that real estate investors can have out there. And, and that you too, when you loan money, would you feel good about helping others like Aunt Mary? There's a lot of people out there in the world that needs that kind of help that are getting a poultry low rate of return on a bank CD. This property here that see the picture of, I painted it blue, put the shutters on it. I, I sanded the floors, put a furnace in it, and I sold the property. And I walked away with $34,747.19, all with IRA money. And the lender, she thanked me. Her name was Blanche. And uh, she said, I appreciate the opportunity to invest in an above average interest. God bless Blanche. Now, this is a win-win program. The, you, as the private lender, are winning. Uh, the real estate investor is winning because they can they can get uh, cash quickly to fund their deals, uh, and the buyers and the sellers uh, for the properties they win. You know they want to sell, they want to buy. So that's 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 a win 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 program out there. Uh, let's move over now to the real estate investors. Let's look at the uh, the benefits there. Um, I want to let you know that my uh, money started out as a trickle of money. I had mom and I had that other lender. And then I had those uh, two luncheons and my money turned into a river of money. And then once I understood private lenders and how they could loan money and how they could uh, be used in real estate, it turned into a flood of money for me. In fact, I had so much money, I couldn't spend it all. I had to hire a guy to go spend my money for me. And I hired him in mid-September one year. From mid-September to Christmas, he bought me 21 properties, all with private money. And then in a, uh, the next eight months, he bought another uh, 48 properties. So that's the power of, uh, of what we're doing today, of, of private money lending out there. Just imagine having a million dollars loaned to you and you don't have to worry about monthly payments. I'm gonna teach you how to do deals and not have to worry about monthly payments here in just a few minutes. Where can you use private money? Well, on the residential side, this is stuff I do. Uh, rehabs, wholesale, subject to short sales, sweat equity. Uh, I don't do luxury homes because where I live in Springfield, Ohio, we don't have luxury homes. Uh, but I know you do down where you live. So uh, that's the type of deals that we can use private money on. And also about 35 to 40% of my student base does this, commercial deals. So motels, apartments, storage units, mobile home parks, and it goes on and on. So great way to use the money. Now, a lot of my lenders uh, have IRAs. Some folks are loaning money like my mom, money wasn't an IRA, it just came out of her bank CD. But a lot of my lenders have IRA and you can't lend to yourself, your, your children or your parents. So you can't lend up and down the family chain, but you can brother and sister. And you can also loan out at a, whatever uh, percent that you wanna loan out at. And I look at this as creating your own private bank. So rather than going to a bank uh, that's down the street on the corner, you're going to a person and they're your bank. Now, here is the magic. Here is how you can do deals and not have to worry about monthly payments. I'll bet virtually everybody listening right now knows somebody that has worked at JOB and has had a 401k, a qualified retirement program. Now, if they have quit, retired, or gotten laid off, you might want to take a screenshot of that. Quit, retired, or gotten laid off. And then uh, here this money is sitting in the 401k. They can roll that money over into NewView, into a self-directed IRA. And now that money's sitting there, and they, uh, the, you know, the lender 
wants to make this thing grow. And they can pull money out of that every month to live off of if they've reached a certain age. But now the rest of that money, what do they do with that? Well, they can loan it out. And what I have found is that there is many lenders that would prefer to get a little bit higher rate of return and not have to pay monthly payments. So I pay, I pay different ways. I pay a, a lower rate, like uh, that 6% or below, if, uh, if they're doing wanting monthly payments. But then I pay a higher rate, like 7 or 8%, if they uh, let the money accrue and then they get paid when I get paid, which means when I sell the property, then everybody gets paid back. Now this property here, let's take a look at the anatomy of deal so you know how this all hangs together. Now the property you see there, a lady wanted to sell it, I wanted to buy it, she wanted all cash, not a surprise. Um, but I looked at the property and she had a, a low interest first mortgage on it. And I wanted her to keep that mortgage on the property because it was a lower interest rate than I was pay paying my private lenders. And uh, she agreed to do that as long as I gave her $39,000 as walking money. Now, for some folks out there, that's a showstopper, but for me, it's a phone call. So what I did was I picked up the phone and I ordered, um, uh, uh, I ordered private money and I had it within a, a couple days and I ordered up $50,000. Now look, look at the math here. Um, she needed 39, but I ordered 50,000. And so what I did was I borrowed extra money. You want to write that down. I always borrow extra. And um, the other thing is, is don't, don't over leverage the house, but borrow extra money. And there was plenty of equity in this, as you'll see here in just a second. And I had uh, the, the 39 for her, but I also had $11,000 extra. What could I do with that? Anything I wanted. But what, would made, what made sense to me was use a little bit of money in repairs. I did a little bit of landscaping on the property and uh, some other stuff for $3,000. And then I had $8,000 left over. And on that, wouldn't it make sense to pay on that first mortgage that I've got on the house, that low interest mortgage? Use that until I, I get somebody in the property. Now, let me pull back the uh, curtain on this and tell you about the lender. Her name's Libby. And she sent in the $50,000 and she had a 401k worked this company all of her life, and then she retired, left the money in the, in the uh, company. And I talked to her about rolling the money over into a self-directed IRA, and she did that. And then she was able to pull money out every month for her to live off of, and then she had a chunk of money that I could use out there. And that's exactly what I did on that property. There is no monthly payments on that. And I walked away with $45,900 in profit on that deal. So everybody won. Libby got a high rate of return. I got, uh, I got $45,900 and, uh, and the seller got to move on. She was a motivated seller and wanted to get out, out there. One of the rules that I have right here is that if I had Libby's money less than 90 days, I always pay my lenders minimum of 90 days. So, you know, it, 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 I think it's just fair, okay? You can do what you want, but that's what I do. So there's no monthly payments when they roll over a 401k to a self-directed IRA, if you so desire. And that's the way I set up my business. Lessons learned. You might want to take a screen, screenshot on this. Uh, don't prejudge folks. Don't um, screen people out because you think they're broke. Uh, what I want you real estate investors to do is to uh, tell people that you pay a high rate of return and let the chips fall where they may. Uh, it might surprise you. And maybe the person is broke and doesn't have the money to loan you but they might know somebody that has some money to loan you and they might be the best lender that you ever got. Uh, the other thing is starting out because the typical private lender doesn't know how, the, how you uh, work the system, how you flow the money. And so they tend to start out uh, and test you. Uh, what I do is, is uh, I'll ask them if I find a deal worth X, should I call you? So if somebody says, I want to loan you, $100,000, I will come back and I will double that. I will say, if I find a deal worth 200000 should I call you? And many times they, they say yes. So uh, it's, it's a great way to, uh, to help everybody out. And then uh, they can become your best sales folks. This is, is going to maybe surprise some of you. That you can, your first live private lender, they're so excited about what you do 
is they tell other folks and they bring in two private lenders and those two private lenders can bring in four and it just multiplies. And then on every single one of them, you're gonna do that test, uh, test technique that I just gave you where you up the ante. If I find a deal worth X, should I call you? And you're gonna find many times that you get so much money you can't spend it all. And that's what happened to me. That's when it turned into a flood right there. Uh, one of the things I like to uh, show you here is a picture of USA Today, the green money tab on the Thursday paper. They typically have CD rates on the bottom left-hand corner. Right there, I've got a one year, which is one I like to look at, 0.99 on that. It is lower than that now. This is, this is from a, a few months ago. And uh, this is the average US CD rates. I want you to think about that. The average rates throughout the the US is that right there. And that's pathetic. That is horrible. Um, look, you can do more deals and more profitable deals using private lenders and that's the best benefit. So on bank CDs, like I just showed you there, let's take a simple example. Let's double the, the 1% and go to 2%. That's $2,000 per year. That is pathetic. That is pathetic when what we can offer. The stock market, okay, here's how it works for me. Okay, <laughs> goes up and goes down. Uh, I, when I got started, I, uh, I thought the way to make money was to invest in the lottery. So uh, let's take the same example of $100,000. Uh, that's how it worked out for me. It didn't work at all. Um, but when I found private lenders for real estate, $100,000 loan at 8% is $8,000 a year. So much better than the 2% or the 1%. The issue is they don't know about you and they don't know about how to get a high rate of return for, uh, for real estate. And so that's where you come in to explain uh, how this works for folks, okay? Uh, so they know about the CDs and the stock market and the lottery. They just don't know about how to invest with you with high rates of return in, in real estate. And that's the magic. And that's what I'm teaching you today. You got three steps to finding private lenders. Number one is to generate leads. Just like buying a property or selling a property, you, you need to uh, generate leads to find private lenders. And then uh, you can invite them to a luncheon like I did or have a one-on-one, -on -one, whatever you desire. And then they either pass or play and they're either in or out. And one of the things I should tell you, this is not a, um, a high pressure sales thing, is just you talk to people and they're either in or out and you move on. Let me give you the 17 ways I believe private lenders are good for you. The best, is because it puts you in control of your financing. If that is the only thing that private lender money does for you, it's enough to go embrace the private lender concept immediately. It puts you in control because if you're going to banks and, and lines of credit and things like that, you are not in control, they're in control. It fits with all types of real estate deals. You do deals that banks and hard money lenders will refuse, that means you lose, and you got no monthly payments. It's the easiest, it's the second list, because not a lot of work. You learn the techniques one time and use them for a lifetime. Your funds show up with just a phone call and you got an army of lenders out there begging you to take your money, take, uh, take their money and you are no longer be begging for money. A third list is the cheapest because you avoid hard money, money lender fees, avoid padded fees. You buy property at a discount because cash is king and you be able to close deals because the most expensive funding you will ever, ever have is when you can't close out there. I know I got some hard money lenders listening to this and they use private money. So that is another avenue for you private lenders to look at is to loan hard money lenders your money. And I got a fourth list. It's the safest because you quit your job and you still get funding. You got poor credit and you still get funding. You can borrow extra so you don't run out of cash and you avoid the embarrassment of losing great deals because you can't close. Best, easiest, cheapest, and safest. There is no other funding source that can match all four of those. And I just gave you 17 solid reasons why you should go get private lenders. Uh, new view for you real estate investors, I would encourage you to get their e-guide and give it to your potential private lenders before they loan to you. Um, read it over first and see if it fits for you. Uh, that's what I did. I got, I got marketing material when I got started out at my very, those two luncheons I got a million dollars at, I started right off with having information from IRA company. Uh, but then I, I'll give you a little helpful hint here. I help the private lender do the paperwork. I just don't throw it over the fence because we'll do it over and over and over again, and we'll be experienced at it. And NewView can help you with that, and it will help the private lenders be successful. 
Uh, the other thing there at the bottom is don't change it from a traditional to a Roth or vice versa, because you can really mess things up and, and, and on the account. Uh, the four type of, uh, of things that I focus with with my student is how to open up the new account, like I just talked about, uh, rolling the money into the account. But if you check the uh, proper boxes on number one, you don't have to mess with number two. Um, and then directional investment, which means directing the money from New View down to the closing table. And then the contribution is getting the money back in after you sell the property or your monthly payments, okay? Uh, and just call up New View if you've got any questions. Uh, just imagine having all the money that you need out there to, to do great things like that. Go, go to Paris. Um, I, my boy was uh, at the top of the Eiffel Tower and I was down at the bottom. I <laughs> like heights. And so, uh, uh, and then that was my daughter's wedding. So anyhow, and if you got uh, questions after this, and you want to get a hold of me, uh, there's, there's my website and, uh, and then there's my, my email. Take a screenshot of that and, uh, and I'll, I'll help you out uh, if, you got, if you got some questions. Uh, so on the, on the website, there's some free stuff, free information out there for you. So um, some of you, I imagine, got questions coming in. Uh, why don't we just go ahead and start those right now? You got them, Lisa? Yes, we're pulling them up right now. Okay. All right, great. This presentation going to be recorded and sent by email. Um, yes, it is going to be recorded. It will be in the blog section of our website, and we can also email that over to you. So I did take note of your name, and um, we'll get that emailed over to you. And let's see, I was blessed with an opportunity to provide a private loan and they paid me 12%. Wish I could do that all day long. <laughs> Thanks yep, for sharing. Yep. yep, definitely. Yep, and that's, you know, the, the beauty of, of, of this is the flexibility, is um, uh, what, what interest is gonna be, be offered, what interest is gonna be accepted. And so uh, there is a lot of flexibility that the going rate throughout the nation Right now, I see is between six and eight percent. I know there's some people in the room probably won't like that. Uh, thing is too low, uh, but that's what I'm seeing out there. And with the economy the way it is, I expect it to go down rather than up. But the nice thing about it is that the private lenders, if they got money and they need to put it someplace, and, and they think they're going to put it on a CD, they're going to they're going to really struggle. So. Uh, they, it'll be a blessing if somebody comes in, I would think with five, six, seven, eight percent. All right. And then we do have some additional questions here. Uh, New view, does Roth and traditional right can both be used for private loans and are both self-directed? Yes, Stephanie. Um, we can use, we can offer both options and they can both be used for private loans. Uh, Ginny, do you recommend using land trust to shield your SDIRA as a lender? Um, Alan, do you have a... I do. Every, every property I have is in a land trust. And it's been that way uh, for probably 15 years. So everything I buy, I put into a land trust. Yep. Each one, each one has their own individual land trust. Okay. And Alan, um, is it that you don't like Roths or are you just saying to um, bring attention to potential uh, tax repercussions there? Oh no, I love Roth. Uh, they, the uh, uh, what I was saying was don't. Um, I heard somebody a long time ago wanted to take the private lenders' funds from a traditional into a Roth, and there's a huge impact with that if you're under a certain age or whatever. But I, you know, I, you just don't want to do that in, unless you know the rules and unless it makes sense. And so you want to have a tax consultant if you want to. Uh, if you consider that. So, no, I like both. I'll, I'll take either one. I'll take Roth or traditional uh, to fund my deals. So those are, those are great. It's just the switching of them that I was trying to caution people from. Okay. And then we have another question. So if I have money to lend, do you have advice as to how to vet those you lend to? Yeah, I, uh, I tried to, I tried to cover a little bit of that at the, at the, at the front end on the five documents. And, um, uh, and with the disclosure statement, I think your I know your main tool is that disclosure. And so when you've got a someone that wants to to loan, you know, that that wants to borrow money from you, then uh, I would I would have get a disclosure statement from the real estate investor 
And uh, so many real estate investors don't know that or don't have them. So they might have to take some time to make it up. But that is, that is part of the rules for me, is have a disclosure. You have all kinds of disclosures. Newview has disclosures. Banks have disclosures. You need to get a disclosure from your real estate investors so that you get, so you can, can vet them. Is that, did I answer the question the way you were looking for from the real estate investor? Um, right. Let's see if they respond. Okay. Yes. She said yes. Okay. okay. Great. Um, let's see. Can you use your self-directed IRA for tax deeds? Yes. Um, are you saying to roll all money from an IRA? I'm not sure I understand. Well, when, when the, I assume the question is, do you want to take, do I, is that all you want to have is IRA money? Well, I, I'll take, you know, some people like my mom didn't have an IRA and she was my first lender. Uh, so my, my focus is, is to borrow money from folks that want to lend it. And uh, regardless of, of where the money is parked, and so uh, the, what I was trying to point out in this presentation is that the blessing that happened to me when I figured out the 401k rollover into the self-directed IRA, uh, that's when uh, my business money coming into my money and coming into my, my business turned into a flood of money. And so uh, it was incredible. I had so much I couldn't spend it all. And uh, I learned the up the ante technique, and I actually created it. And then, uh, uh, and then more money just kept coming in and coming in. And they kept bringing more uh, lenders to me. I didn't know early on if uh, someone loaned me money that all of a sudden they'd bring in their sister and their and their son and and their uncle, and all of a sudden I had a bunch of family members. So, yeah, it's uh, yeah whatever whatever comes in. Is okay. What I um, we've had a couple more. So can, can you please speak to the risks of being a private money lender? If you have just a few there. Yeah. The, uh, the first, first risk is if, if you don't get the paperwork handled up front, if you don't have a mortgage, a promissory note, hazard insurance, um, and the disclosure statement up front, uh, and the bottom line on that is if the, if the, uh, the property is not secured. Um, and so the, you know, the real estate investor, can't sell the property without you being notified and getting you paid back. So, uh, so that's why tying things down at the front end um, is this, the second issue uh, that, that could happen. Uh, I saw it happen uh, in, in Florida um, with, with a student is he couldn't, he couldn't make the payments. Something had happened. He wasn't able to make the monthly, monthly payments. Um, and my recommendation there, if that ever happens, that the real estate investor just should, and I know the private lenders don't want to hear this, but should just deed the, the property back to the private lender, let them get a realtor and get the thing sold. And so uh, that would be, that would be the best option as opposed to having the real estate investor make the private lender go through some legal loopholes or jump through things to, to get it back, like, you know, foreclosure and stuff. Okay. Um, somebody said, um, let's see. Are you using more than one private lender on a specific deal or do you often have more than one private lender or several on one deal? Great question. Um, obviously the best thing is one-to-one, -one, but uh, I'll tell you what, over the years uh, I've done it uh, different ways where uh, I'll have uh, two lenders. Uh, the bigger chunk of money gets a first mortgage, second chunk of money gets the second mortgage. Sometimes I've had three. Uh, Sometimes I make a joke that the person in the 73rd position is not going to be very happy, but, uh, you know, so, yeah. So, yeah, I have, I, I have more than one uh, from time to time. Okay. And in terms of lead generation, um, what has been one of your favorite resources besides the um, IRA new view take? Uh, to find, this is from a real estate investor to find, uh, to find a lender. Um, is the way I've taken it. And, and on that, um, what, I, what I like is I like to put together a PowerPoint presentation and I can show it in a group or I can show it one-on-one. -on -one. And um, uh, what, I, what I also like is, is giving the, the lender a, an audio that explains what we're doing. And so 
I, I give the lender an audio and then uh, they get to listen for 22 minutes about what private lending is all about and why it's a good thing if they loan money to the person that gave them that audio. Uh, so I like, I like that. I like to have, I like to have the PowerPoint slide. I like to have the, uh, that, and then I would recommend also that, uh, you, you might have a special report. Uh, so I've got 12 questions and answers on my special report. And that really is, is great for a, a private lender to see because they might only have one or two questions, but they can go on in and get their answer right there off of that. And then the, the next item, which I find very important is to have a credibility kit. Uh, the reason being is because private lenders loan you money based on the fact that they trust you. And so I would have a credibility kit. Mine has a page on me, a page on the company. So that's two pages. Uh, it also has something that I found to be very special. That's where I went out to an office store and I bought certificate paper. And on that certificate paper, I put together uh, different things that, um, uh, that I, I had. Like if I'd got a home study system, if I'd been to a live event on training, uh, I put those in there. I would also put a page on NewView, who you do business with, okay? And your, your prefer, preferred IRA company. And so different things like that. And then hand that out. Mine is spiral bound. I have a picture of the typical property that I buy on the front and uh, I hand it out. And typically the lenders don't keep it. They thumb through it and send it back. But if they do keep it, who cares? So uh, it's, it's important though that to have a credibility kit because they loan you money based on the fact that they trust you. Okay, we have a couple others. If your borrower is buying in a land trust, do you have any special language or document? I don't. Okay. And um, somebody that would like to borrow, what are the fees, if any, associated with borrowing from a private lender as opposed to a hard money lender? Well, with a... With a private lender, we as real estate investors make the rules. I went back to mom and, and this is what I do with all my lenders. I, I give them a mortgage, a promissory note, has insurance, lender title insurance, and a disclosure. And I get to structure the rules. And I structure rules that's not going to shoot me in the foot to where I put a balloon on the deal. Uh, sometimes I've seen people say, well, I'm going to pay, pay you back in a year. Well, if you haven't sold the property, you know, and, it, it, and maybe the, the economy changes and you, you have trouble selling it, you know, then you can't promise stuff like that. So I go out, I go out on mine to where uh, it's five years or until the property sells or is refinanced. And I put that in my, in my documents right there. So, um, so that's, that's what I do, do on that. Okay. And then we have also, um, if you look to work with lenders, where did you get your disclosures created? I hired an attorney. I hired an attorney. Um, what happened to me was when I got in, into getting private money, I didn't know the legal ramifications like most people. And so I hired an attorney and uh, I had him research my, my state and I, realized, and I realized that I needed a disclosure statement. So he, he made, made it up for me. And then I had him researched the whole United States and Canada. And he, when he got done, he said, Hey, I want to thank you. And I said, why is that? And he said, I'm moving into my new house and you just bought it. So, um, paid the guy a lot of money to do a lot of, a lot of work for him. But in doing that, it, uh, helped me become an expert on the legal ramifications on this. That's why I talked early about the six programs that if, uh, you got a stranger out there, that they need to comply with, with at least with one of those programs before you borrow money from. Um, we have, uh, I think, three more questions. How can I get connected to private money lenders? Um, I know from the NewView standpoint, we usually hold a quarterly client uh, meeting where you could potentially meet other lenders or borrowers or real estate investors, notes investors. Um, and we also have annual conferences as well. Um, Alan, would you like to add something to now, that? What, what it goes back to the three touch rule is when you meet somebody that you don't know, I would, I would at least get to know them over a 30 day period and, um, and, and have at least three touches with them. And then on the fourth touch and the 31st day, I, those are the rules that are out there. And those are the rules that I want my students to follow. Uh, but that is a great place at your event uh, to find, you know, real estate investors find lenders and lenders find people out there that want to do it the right way and, uh, and marry it up. So 
uh, a little bit more on that question on finding finding lenders. Uh, what what you what I would like to do is approach people that you know first, if you could, um, and then in doing that, you should have a, a script on what you're going to say, um, like um, you know. I'm a real estate investor in Springfield, Ohio, and at times I borrow money from folks just like you. I pay a high rate of return. Can I tell you more? And so have a little script like that that you could share with people and see see if they want to loan you money. So you could uh, you could call them up, have a list of 20 folks, call them up. And um, I like sending out postcards to them uh, before I call them. So Monday on week one, I'd send a postcard. Uh, second week, I'd send a postcard on money. Monday, third week, I'd send a postcard and then I'd call them up on Thursday and ask them if they're going to come and say, Hey, I've been sending you a postcard. I don't know if you saw it or not. And then on the, uh, uh, the following Thursday, then have your luncheon. And just like a dentist calls you up the week of your, of your appointment, you want to call them up that week too, the fourth week, uh, to see if, uh, if there, if is a reminder. And so, uh, uh, and then you can you can have a a one on one. You don't have to go through all that if you just want to do a one on one. If you're going to do a group meeting, then that's the way I go through it. Okay. And then um, can we use IRA money to get loan from Fannie Mae towards the purchase of a residential property? I don't know. So, I, think, I don't know. You can use non recourse loans. Yeah. Um, with your IRA. Yep. And then I think you touched on this, but is there anything else that you would describe about your luncheon advertising used to attract lenders? So you said the post, the uh, postcards, anything else? Yeah, I like that. I, when I, yeah, the thing I like is, is to stage the room when they show up. Uh, when they walk in the room, I have what I call a parade of homes going on, which are my properties. Um, for those of you that haven't bought properties out there, you could, you could have ones that you'd like to buy. And then I have this going on and it's in a slide presentation where every six seconds, it gives you a different picture and it loops. It'll, it'll go for eternity until I go up and turn it off. And then when I turn it, click the off button, then I bring up my presentation. The other thing too, is I'll have a registration desk when people come in and they get a little badge where they can put their first name on one of those sticky pieces of paper. On. And so I have them sign in and then I will have information there from New View. And I would have that at the end of the table and the folks that uh, are interested in IRA stuff, then they would pick that up. And then I also uh, have a, a little uh, bowl of pretzels across the room where they can go over and they can pick up my credibility kit. And they, and I have a, a board there that has uh, slides on it, six different uh, printed pieces of paper on this board that, which are actually my slides in the presentation that shows them the flow of the money where it starts out with a private lender and, buy, and then the real estate investor buying the house and then they sell the house and then the money goes back to the private lender and we do it again. So I have the room staged for folks. And then I, uh, I like to have a luncheon if I'm gonna do that. And I do, the, I do a Q&A like you and I are right now. And then I, uh, I have lunch, uh, no alcohol. It's not that kind of thing. Uh, and uh, so they get uh, chicken and salad and tea and, uh, and no alcohol and a cream brulee for dessert. And so that's what I do. Well, thank you so much. I think that's all of the questions that we have for today. Um, I don't know about you, but I learned a lot. And my favorite slide was the one that said uh, CDs, stock market, ouch, <laughs> and, uh, and lottery zero, 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 zero. So um, thanks for sharing today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for everybody that joined the call today. Thank you for your time. Uh, this webinar will be posted on the blog section of our website by tomorrow afternoon. Uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to give me a call. That's my direct line, the 407-412-7177. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you again.